Hi everybody. Welcome back to Jenkins Boatworks. I am Chuck Jenkins. In this episode, we're going to continue working on our Chesapeake 18 uh, kayak that we got from uh, Chesapeake Lightcraft. Uh, we've got it. Uh, the fiberglass work has been pretty much done and we got it. We'll show how we lay it out and uh, then do the fill coats, which uh, proved to be a little more um, detailed than I expected, but I'm glad that I took the time. Um, so anyway, we're glad you're back. If you are new to the channel, uh, would you consider subscribing? And uh, you can click the little bell down below, probably that side. I don't know. Um, and uh, if you click the bell, you'll get uh, uh, notified whenever a new video is coming out. So. We still have lots to go on the kayak. Uh, we're still knee deep in the Freedom 17 canoe and very soon we hope to get the, uh, the Haven in the water. So um, anyway, a lot going on, but uh, in this episode, we're gonna concentrate on getting a fiberglass on the kayak. All right, let's jump in. So we're all sanded down to 220 and been running my hand along, feeling the places that are rough and then sanding those off by hand. And I think we're ready to lay fiberglass cloth on here. So that's what this is. Got this from Total Boat. Six ounce cloth, 50 inches by 10 yards. So we'll uh, open this up and roll it out. You want to get it in a roll if you can, rather than folded, because if it's folded, it's going to have creases in it that are make your life difficult when you go to put your epoxy on. So, whoa, she's coming along nicely. Work continues on our Chesapeake 18. We got the first coat of epoxy on here. And we did that with a, just kind of pouring it out and squeegeeing around on the top. But when we got on the sides, it just would run too hard too fast. So I ended up doing the sides with a chip brush and then we have since used a roller and put two fill coats on this. And I thought the second fill coat would probably do it, but we've still got some spots where, I don't know if this will show up on the camera. There's just a little bit where you can see the cloth still kind of trying to peek through there. Yeah, you can almost see it better right now. It's not bad. It's just, there's just a couple of places where it's just not as smooth as probably it could be. 
So we're gonna do one more coat with the roller and uh, see if we can't replace right there. It's really not showing up on the camera very good. Well, they're quite a bit right, right there. See how you can see the square weave of the cloth? That's what we gotta fill in. So anyway, that's how, well, how we'll do it. If the if this third fill coat doesn't do it, then I think we'll go back and and use a chip brush and brush and, and get it on just heavy enough to to get it done. Um, we'll see. Okay, so we're gonna try to do this uh, final weave fill coat. And I'm using a, a four inch high density foam roller with my unthickened epoxy. And uh, I got this little roller pan just at the hardware store. It says solvent resistant. It's real flexible. It's sturdy, but it's flexible. And so that's been nice because um, I've been able to reuse it. Whatever epoxy's left in here, I just let it dry and harden up a little bit and it just pops right out of there. It all just peels right out really easy. So that's been really nice. Um, this, this foam roller is a high density, four inch foam roller. It doesn't really hold very much, um, which is good because we're getting a really thin coat on here. Really thin coat. The problem with that is that this is my third time to do a fill coat. So I'm not getting enough on there to, to get completely filled in like two fill coats like you might ordinarily. But I'm okay with thin coats. I'm doing these within 24 hours, so I'm getting a chemical and a mechanical bond. And since with this kayak, weight, we want it to be lightweight. Weight is an issue. The thinner the coats that I can get away with, the better because it's just that much less weight. The other thing is that it's not running. So if I come up on the keel here or on the chine and push just a little bit, I can get epoxy on that seam, but it's not running down the side. So there's just a lot of advantages to doing it like this. The only disadvantage is that it's basically taken me almost all week. I put wax paper on the sawhorse. I didn't want to <laughs> epoxy the boat to the sawhorse. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.